All right, so I've got a series of videos on fetch, how to fetch the data from the server, how to bring it back. I've got some videos about how to manipulate the HTML, manipulate the DOM, how to insert elements and so on. What I want to do with this video is I want to bring it all together. I want to do the whole process from start to end. I'm going to have an HTML file. I'm going to write the JavaScript to go and fetch the data, bring the data back, and then parse that JSON and generate some HTML based on the data that's coming through the JSON. Now I've created an HTML file here. Um, there's a script tag attached. We're going to be writing this JavaScript here. And this is just some dummy content. I'm going to be deleting this. I just put it in here to show what we're going to get at the end. And here's my CSS. That's the whole file right there. Just some very basic stuff to style this. Now if I take a look in here, this is the page. I refresh this. There we go. This is what I get. I have a bunch of list items. I styled them to put borders on, white background, gray background. Person's name is going to appear here, and then their username, and then their email address. These are the three pieces of information for each person that I'm going to extract from the JSON that I get back. Now I'm actually requesting the JSON already. This is what I'm going to be getting. So you can see inside of each one of these things, it's an array. There's 10 elements. Inside each one, there's an ID, a name, a username, an email, and a bunch of other things. If we open up one of them, you can see there's an address with a whole bunch of fields inside of it, including the geolocation. There's a company with a bunch of information about the company. And then here's the rest of the user information. So all of that is available for each person. I just want to extract the name, the username, and their email address. Just those few things. Though That's all that I'm going to be getting out of here to fill in these properties. Now, you could extend this and extract any part of this that you wanted after following the steps that we're going to be going through here. Okay, so let's expand that just a little bit more. And we'll jump back to our code. Now that we know what we're going to be doing, we're going to strip out here all of these list items. So this is where we're going to be putting our HTML that we're going to generate based off of the JSON. My CSS, I'll put this in a code gist, and the finished JavaScript I will also put into a code gist. So take away the side menu. Here's the URI that I'm requesting. It's the JSON placeholder one that I've used in all the other videos. And it's the user page that's going to return 10 users to me. So first we create our request object, which has two parameters. First one is the URI. That's right here. And then the second one is your options object. And inside the options object, we're going to have a method defined as get. And we're using the course mode. So cross-origin resource sharing. We call the fetch method. We're assuming at this point the browser supports fetch. We're going to request this URI. It's going to hopefully give us back the response object, call this function, check that it's OK. If it is, we're going to call the JSON method, which will pass my JSON data extracted from the response down here into my second function. And right now, all I'm doing is I'm console logging this out, which is what we were looking at in the browser just a moment ago. Okay, so we have browser ready, script is attached, the CSS is attached. Let's start putting some of that JSON data into this UL. We're going to jump right in here, JSON data. This is the array. We want to loop through the array, so we could do a for each loop, we could do a for in loop, could do a while loop if we wanted. I'm going to do a for each loop. Inside of here, there's going to be something passed in, and here's my function. Inside the for each loop, I'm going to be passing in, or the for each method rather, will be passing to my function the item, the index, and the array itself. 
I don't need the index, I don't need the array, so I'm only going to be using the item itself, which is going to be a user. So that's the variable that I'm going to use. For each one of these users, I'm going to be creating an li inside of here. So we will say outside this loop, we want to get a reference to this ul. And I'm going to create a document fragment, and that will be the object that I add all the list items to. When I've got the whole thing ready, I'm going to attach the document fragment to the UL. So my document fragment with all the LIs will be placed right here, all those list items. Inside the loop, we need to create a list item. Create element is going to allow us to create that new piece of HTML. Like that inside each one of the list items, I'm going to have one paragraph for the name, one paragraph for the username and email address. So there'll be two paragraphs inside each one of these list items. So there'll be a paragraph for the name. for the username and the email. There we are. Now you can be a little bit more descriptive with your variable names if you want. Um, since I only have these three parts that I'm working with, I'm just going to use these abbreviations that reminds me it's a paragraph and the N is for the name, username and email is the U and the E. We want to add text content for this one and the user is the object and inside of the user object there is a name field. Let's double check that. Name, there we are. So it's name, username, and email. These are the field names that I have to use, and they are case sensitive. These are the field names that I need to use in my HTML. So, first paragraph is going to be that. Second paragraph is the username and the email address, which actually I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to create a string and then I'm going to concatenate the username and then a space and then an email address. So we can use plus signs with spaces around the quotation marks to concatenate these things together. I prefer to use the actual string concat method which is going to combine them. So we can take these two quotation marks here. This is creating an empty string and to that I'm concatenating first the username field from the user object and then a space and then user email. We could, if we wanted, put a hyphen in here with an extra space on either side of it. Anything you want, really. Now we've got the text content done for each of those. We need to know what CSS classes. Now I had in my CSS over here, if I bring that back up, dot name, dot info. These were the class names that I was using. This is the first paragraph, this is the second paragraph. So I want to bring those together. Now we can do class name, which is one way of doing it, and just say name. The other one was info. And another way of putting the class name in there, you can say for the second paragraph, class list dot add, and then info gets added to that. Both of these are doing the same thing. This one overwrites the entire contents of class property. So in my HTML, if I had class here, 
dot class name with a capital N rewrites anything that was in there with this new value. Class list add will not overwrite, it just simply takes this and appends it to whatever's inside of here with a space in front of it if there's another class name there. Achieving the same thing. Now we want to put both paragraphs inside of our list item. First the name, and then the username and email. Okay, so we've created the list item, we've created the two paragraphs, we've put the name into the first paragraph, the username and email into the second paragraph, we've added the CSS classes, we've put those two paragraphs inside of the list item, and we've done it in order, the order that we want. We want the name first and then the other information afterwards. We haven't put it on the page yet though. This has all just been in memory creating these elements. We want to append child to the document fragment and the list item, which is the parent of these other two. This list item gets put into the document fragment. Doing this each time through the loop, we're going to be creating 10 list items. Each of those has two paragraphs, and then the list item one at a time gets added to the document fragment in the order that we read through the JSON. After this is done, after our for each loop, this is the point in time where we need to add the document fragment to the UL. So the unordered list that we referenced here with users, we're going to say UL and child df. That's our document fragment. Okay, and there's the whole thing. Now, I didn't take the time to show you writing the CSS, but we did take a look at the CSS to see that it was just styling the various elements. And here we have all of our list items. So all 10 list items, and if I look at the JSON, Leanne Graham, email is sincere at april.biz, Leanne Graham, sincere at april.biz, and Brett was the username. There it is. If I scroll down, I'll go through this way. Let's look at the second last one. Glenna Reichert, Delphine, and I am McDermott at Dana.io. Second last one. I am McDermott at Dana.io. Delphine's the username and Glenna, Glenna Reichert. Yes, okay, so there it is. That's bringing the whole thing together. So we have just this little bit of JavaScript. That little bit of JavaScript right there was able to add all of the users. Our data set that we got back, our JSON data, only had 10, but if this had 500, it's the same few lines right here, the same 14 lines of JavaScript that's going to be giving us all of that content. So you can see the power of fetch from here and how you can easily bring it together with some CSS. All right, so as always, any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will create a code just for the JavaScript and a code just for the CSS, and I will put those links in the comments. Thanks for watching.